thinking, every good gospel song needs a fiddle in it. Huh? Or a banjo. Well, banjo. You know what the difference is between a banjo and a fiddle, don't you? Fiddle has strings and a banjo. No, a ban banjo has strings and a fiddle has strings. <laughs> Look, that's a joke and I didn't even plan it in here. Hey, we're going to jump back into our sermon. Man, y'all going to have to edit that out of the camera. I, I just, I'll, I'll let y'all know that right now. April, you can take care of that. She's shaking her head no. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. You set me up, buddy. We're going to jump back into our sermon series on worship this morning. If you recall, we took a break just right around Easter last week. Um, we were talking about worship. We about four weeks into it, I believe. And I don't know. I told you early on, I don't know how long this is going to go. We're just going to keep going. And wherever the Holy Spirit leads and directs, I'm just going to keep on going with it. It might be next year this time, and we still might be talking about it. I doubt it, but just saying. Um, let, two weeks ago, there was part of the message that I had where I used Paul and Silas as a, um, an illustration. Do you remember that? Talked about a little bit about the power of the Holy Spirit or power of worship with Paul and Silas. I'm jumping right back to Paul and Silas. We're going to talk about that some more. And actually, the entire message today revolves around that story. I've titled today's message, There is Power in Worship. Let's open with a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this family. Your family. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. We thank you for the opportunity to get back to, to Sunday school. Looking forward to the new things to come, Lord. We are excited. We're excited to be here today. Lord, as always, I pray for your Holy Spirit's intervention on this people. Your people, your children, the people watching, Lord, and the people that are present. Lord, I ask you to be with us. Guide our hearts our minds, our ears, and our eyes. Lord, I'm just a vessel. That's all I am. You fill me up and you dump me out. Lord, guide our thoughts here today and let the Holy Spirit move. In Jesus' name, amen. If you got your Bibles with you, go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read 16 through 27. Now, if you remember the illustration that I used two weeks ago, I only read a portion of this scripture. We're going to read a lot today. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to start in verse 16. 16, 16. When somebody's got it, give me an amen. It says this. Once, when we were going to a place of prayer... We were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and they dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs, uh, customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined into the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely beaten, they were thrown into a prison and the jailers were commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now... Let me tell you something. Up until the scripture reading this morning, Paul and Silas, they were doing good. All right. If we were to go back and read a little bit further back and starting in verses uh, chapter 16 there, verse one, or even go back into verse 15, chapter 15, excuse me. You would see that Paul and Silas was doing pretty good. They were on their second um, mission journey. Paul had a vision. 
He had a vision about where he needed to go, what he needed to do, what he needed to preach, what he needed to teach. And you would also read earlier in the scriptures that the Holy Spirit was with them the entire time. He led them. The Holy Spirit was leading them the entire time. Pointed them which way to go. Guided them which way to go. Directed them which way to go. And at times even said, hold on. Don't go there. It's too dangerous. Stop. Don't go any further. The Holy Spirit was doing this the entire time for Paul and Silas. Who could, who could ask any more than that? Right? I know Jared was talking about the Holy Spirit in downstairs Sunday school class. Janice was talking about the Holy Spirit. Upstairs Sunday adult Sunday school class. Guiding and directing our lives. Every single move. Go forward in this area. Hold back. Stop in this area. Who could ask for anything more? Paul and Silas. It was perfect. It was awesome. And because of the Holy Spirit's movement in Paul and Silas. Because of their obedience. If we was to go back to... Verse 5, now we didn't read verse 5, but if you was to jump back into verse 5, you'd see that the churches were strengthened, right? Paul and Silas are on these mission trips to other churches. And these churches are strengthened. People come to God. People are saved. Everything is going good. Everything is going great, right? They're on a spiritual high because everything that is happening through their ministry is succeeding. Everything's going good, right? The Holy Spirit's guiding them. The Holy Spirit's directing them, telling them when to go forward, when to stop. Everything is going good. But then... It seems like overnight things took a turn for the worse. That ain't never happened to us, is it? Our scripture reading this morning tells us Paul and Silas, they picked up a, uh, a tag along. They picked up a hitchhiker. They had a young slave girl that started following them. The Bible describes her as a, uh, it says a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. In other words, she was a demon-possessed girl. She would shout out, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which shows us the way to salvation. That's right. Give me an amen. And get this. <laughs> Thank you. She didn't do it just once or twice, and then that would be it. The Bible tells us she went around day after day after day, shouting this out. Wherever Paul and Silas were, she was there with them, shouting this out out and got to the point where scripture tells us that paul was troubled it's a fancy way in saying paul was aggravated he couldn't take it no more he's at wit's end with this it is making him so aggravated now you might ask well why was paul aggravated why was he troubled why was he so upset right she's proclaiming the good news of jesus christ she's proclaiming the praises of god Yes, she was speaking the truth. But let me tell you something. Paul was more concerned with the messenger than he was the message. Here's what I mean by that. See, the devil has no right to proclaim the praises of God. Uh-uh. Very important to understand. Paul knew that the devil was only trying to confuse the listeners. The devil knew... That if he could get people to associate Paul and Silas with this demon-possessed little girl, then their message would be weak and unaccepted. So Paul pretty much says, that's it. I've had enough. I'm done with this. He turns to the girl. He says, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out of there. And what happens? The Bible says immediately, I love it, didn't say yeah, about an hour later it came out. No, immediately the spirit 
left her. That tells you the power, and this is a whole other message, that's the power of Jesus Christ's name. That's the power in Jesus' name. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of there. And immediately the Spirit left her. Now, I know right now you're probably thinking, Donnie, what does this story have to do with worship? Well, just hold your horses. Because I'm getting to it. I'm setting the stage, okay? We're getting there. Now, you would think that this slave girl's owners would have been happy for this girl, wouldn't you? You've got to understand something. In this time period, in the society at that particular time, people believed that if you could tell the future, then you were being spoken to to the God, smaller g, false gods. Okay? That's one reason. That's another reason why Paul had to say, get out of here. Get out of there. Because he didn't want the people confusing what their beliefs were at that time. Well, if this girl is proclaiming this message and she's controlled or she's spoken to by all these different gods that we worship, then, well, then Paul and Silas must have something to do with her. That's one of the biggest reasons why Paul Paul and Silas said, hey, I've had enough. Get out of there. But you got to understand something. This girl's owners was using her for a profit. Okay? This girl was a cash crop, if you will, to the owners. That's how they made their living. So you can see why these men are upset. She was their well-being. That's what, how they got taken care of. And they didn't care one single thing about her. They did not care about her in the least. We know this story. They called a meeting to the town. Brought Paul and Silas before them. The judges or the magistrate of the town at that time. They held this mock trial. Without a defense or anything. Paul and Silas were beaten and they're thrown into jail. Talked about it about two weeks ago. Let me give you a quick review really quick. Number one. Paul and Silas received to respond to a vision. To go on a mission trip. Two. They arrive and they preach and they teach. And people are converted. Church numbers grow. They're directed by the the Holy Spirit the entire time. The Holy Spirit is telling them where to go. They have a quick exorcism of a slave girl. The slave's masters get upset. Paul and Silas are severely beaten. No real trial. They're just thrown into prison. Now, at this point, it'd be very easy for Paul and Silas to get upset with God. Don't you think? I mean, they're doing God's work. Everything that God wanted them to do, they're doing. They're following his will. They're helping people. Life or lives are being changed. Churches were growing. Paul and Silas were being spiritual mentors. They're being obedient. They're doing everything God wants them to do. And then... Then they're wrongly accused, severely beaten. They're locked in chains. Feet are locked in stocks and they're put in the center of the prison surrounded by guards. Now, for some of us, that might have been the end of the line. This would have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Right? Think about it. We're doing everything that God wants us to do. Everything's going good. Right? God's, I know I'm in God's will because everything's going good. And then this happens. Lord, yeah, we were on a roll. We were having a good time. We, Lord, we were making a difference. But you know, like everything else, if it's good, it's got to come to an end. So, Lord, go ahead and free me from these shackles and I'm going to head on home. Right? Is that how it happened? Put yourself in their situation. See, sometimes... It's all right to be a Christian when things are going our way. But let there be a hint of persecution or trouble and then we start packing our bags. Man, I've been there, done that. You get into a situation, and you're trying to figure out, well, God, I thought this was your will. I thought this was your plan. I'm following through with it. So why am I dealing with this? I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. Let's keep going, because I do have a point of worship in here. I, really, I promise you, I really do. 
Paul and Silas are shackled to the floor in a prison. And you just can imagine everything going on. Imagine what they're feeling. Imagine the suffering that they're dealing with. Their back is hurt because they've been beat. Right? Their heads hurt. Their entire body is aching. They're in a cold, damp prison. All for doing what God told them to do. And you know. You know that the devil was trying to work on their mind. You know the devil's lying to them. Telling them, you know, hey, you realize, Paul, Silas, you realize God did this to you? Saying things like, you know, God don't really love you. God, you know, he, he really don't care for you. Look, he, he sent you out here, but now he's abandoned you. You know, if God cared for you, this wouldn't have happened. We never thought that, have we? Yes, Paul and Silas were faithful, godly Christians. Yes, they were men of strength and godly character. But get this, them whips were real. All right? That pain, it was real. It wasn't like God miraculously took the pain away from them when they were getting stripped and beaten. And I can't help but think that the devil is trying to work on them. Because you know that's how he does with us. The enemy is working on them. Over and over in their minds, I'm sure the devil was trying to steal their zeal, take their joy, take their strength. And what did Paul and Silas do? What happened when midnight rolled around? See, when everything was bad, when everything was going good, when nothing was going right, when the future looked dim, dark, Horrible. At midnight, they had enough, so they started singing. At midnight, they said, you know what? Let's go ahead and we're going to get our worship on. We're going to worship because we know how much God loves us. We know this is a bad situation, but guess what? We know God's with us here and now. God's with us in this jail, so we're going to get our worship on. And they started singing. Right? They started singing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I don't know what they sang, but that's kind of what it sounded like in my head. And they got louder. And it got louder. And it got louder. The singing began to fill the entire prison. The other prisoners, they got woken up. And now they're trying to figure out what's going on. Who are the lunatics... That are singing in a time like this. Everything is going wrong. Don't they realize they in jail? They in prison. They ain't having a good time. Why are they singing? But they kept on singing. And they kept on singing. And they kept on singing. They didn't care about the pain. They didn't care about their stocks. They didn't care about the prison. They didn't care of what tomorrow might look like. And then it happened. A great earthquake. The prison shook. The walls shook. The chains shook. And the bonds fell off. Was this coincidence? Let me tell you something. You can call it coincidence if you want to. I know my God. He don't work in coincidences. God works in God incidences. There is power in. In praise. I set the stage. I said all of that to say that. Say this. There is power in praise. And I'm going to take it a further step further. Not just power in praise. Not just power in worship. There is supernatural power when we worship. There is supernatural power when you. When you worship. And they didn't worship because they knew it was going to set them free. You realize that, right? They didn't say, Paul didn't look to Silas and Silas looked to Paul and say, hey, you know what? If we start singing real loud, um, I'm sure God will set our chains free. That ain't what they did. 
They didn't praise, they didn't worship God to get their chains free. They didn't worship so they could get freedom. They simply worshiped because they loved their God. That was it. Church, I stand in front of you today telling you there is supernatural power at work when we worship. There is supernatural power when you worship. And I ain't talking about just here in church. I'm talking about Monday through Saturday. We need to be a lot more like Paul and Silas. Here's what I'm getting at. If you could just stop. Stop and look past your trial. If you could stop and look past your financial need. If you could stop and look past your aches and pains, past your hurt, and praise God Almighty, no matter how you feel, listen to me, God will bring a bond-breaking, prison-opening experience. I'm here to tell you, there is supernatural power in praise. I'm going to get real... Specific. There are some of you here that need to let loose of the bonds that's binding you. Let loose of the chains that are holding you back from worshiping. It might be pride. Might be hurt. Might be sickness. Might be fear. I don't know what it is, but you would, if you just began to worship. I'm talking about true worship. I'm not talking about coming to church just for that hour because it's the right thing to do. I'm talking about what you do on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And let all of that come together so when you come together on church with this big old family, then you're just here to have a party. Right? You're here to celebrate. You're here to get excited about what God is doing in your life. Even when it don't feel like it. Even when times are tough. Supernatural power at work when you praise, when you worship. Some of you feel the pains of this old body. It's like stripes on the back. You can't praise him because of the pain. Let me tell you something. God's telling you this morning to praise him in spite of the pain. That's right. You heard me say it. Tell that old devil, I'm going to praise God in spite of my pain. I'm going to praise God in spite of my financial needs. I'm going to praise God in spite of my diagnosis. I'm going to praise God in spite of my loss. I'm going to praise God in spite of the valleys that I'm going through in this life. You know why? Because when we can do that, when you can, when you can praise God at the lowest point in your life, can you imagine what it's going to look like when all is good? Then, then you are having a celebration. You're praising God for what he has done, what he's doing and what he plans to do, even when you don't know exactly what that is. Why? Because God has a perfect plan for every single one of your lives. And he's working. There are times when we do not get it. We talked about it in Jared's class downstairs. I'm not always going to get it. In the circumstances that I'm dealing with, I'm not always going to see God's hand at work. Okay? I don't always understand it. God does. God's got a perfect plan. Plan, And we need to rely on that perfect plan and just say, God, I don't understand these situations that I'm going through. I don't understand why I'm going through them. But guess what I'm going to do, Lord? I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to glorify you in every pit that I'm dealing with. And it will free your chains. It will set you free. Praise and worship will break those bonds that bind you. Praise and worship will open the prison that captures you. Praise and worship will remove the stripes 
of pain from your back. Praise and worship will turn dark into light. Amen? I want to give you one more thought before I close. In your life, in your life, you never know who's listening to you. Praise God. Think about this now. In your life, you'll never know the people that are watching you worship. School, work, wherever you're at. You don't know who's watching you. You never know who needs that hope that comes from Christ. You never know who's waiting and watching in your life for someone to show them God. Here's what I'm getting at. Turn back to your scriptures. Acts 16, I'm going to start in verse 27. Now, last two weeks ago when I talked about this, I stopped with that scripture. Let me tell you, let me show you the power of praise, power of worship. Start in verse 27. You ready? The jailer woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and he was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're here. The jailer called for lights. He rushed in and fell tremble before Paul and Silas. He thought to himself, or excuse me, he then brought them out and he asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your house. Then the spirit. <clears throat> then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all those in his house. At that hour of night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer, jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. Now listen, if that story ended where I finished it earlier in this message... Man, that'd be a good story, wouldn't it? I mean, that would, that would be an uplifting story. I talked about that two weeks ago, and I ended it back there two weeks ago. I mean, that's, that's a good story. But it didn't stop there. Look what happened because of Paul and Silas's worship. Something more important than their freedom happened. See, that Philippian jailer was ready to give up. All was lost. He drew his sword. He was ready to kill himself. And Paul shouted out, don't harm yourself. We all here. We read Paul and Silas led that soldier to God. And not just him. The Bible tells us that his entire family was saved. Why? Why? Because Paul and Silas was determined to worship when it did not make any sense. When all was going wrong, when the future was grim, when it looked like there was no way out, Paul and Silas, they started praising and worshiping God. They got their worship on. There is supernatural power in worship. We're not always going to understand why we're dealing with what we're dealing with, what we're going through, what we're going through. Okay? Paul and Silas very could have easily said, God, you know, we're following you. We're doing what you want us to do. The Holy Spirit has directed us this entire time. Go this way. Don't go that way. Turn left. Turn right. Do not go any further. Holy Spirit's been moving, guiding, directing the entire time. So it would have been very easy for Paul and Silas to say, Lord, what happened? What happened? Didn't the Holy Spirit... We're now getting beat. We got stripped naked and we're beaten and we're in the middle of a jail. What happened? God's saying, I've got a plan. I had a plan. Holy Spirit was moving and guiding and directing. Why? Because in their troubles, in their trials, in their tribulation, God said, I am going to work a supernatural power and an entire family is going to come to know me. We're not always going to get it. We're not always going to understand why we're doing why, what's happening. But you've got to trust and have faith that God does. He's got a perfect plan. And you know what? If someone in a family can come to know Christ because of a butt whooping, I'm saying bring it on. Right? That's what Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas ain't got a clue. But they say, I'm going to worship. I'm going to praise you, God. 
I'm going to lift up your name. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you honor. And look what happened because of it. As I come to a close, let me ask you a serious question. Here's the question. Where has your focus been? It's a simple question. Where has your focus been? Here's what I mean by that. Sometimes a healing comes when we get our mind off of our healing. Sometimes the chains fall off when we focus on God and not our captivity. Sometimes freedom comes when we're not so focused on our bondage. You see, it can actually become a distraction. It can lead us not to praise. It can lead us not to worship the Lord. And let me tell you something. God wants your worship. Not only does he want your worship. Get this. He covets our worship. He's telling us that there is supernatural power when we worship. Some of you are facing turmoil. Some of you are facing trials and tribulations. Some of us just facing plain old hard times. But God wants us to praise and worship him in those trials because we don't know who we're impacting because of it. The devil is going to love, he would love to steal your joy, your peace. He knows that he can steal that. He knows if he can take it from you, it's going to leave you defeated. And if you're defeated, then you won't be able to praise and worship God. And that's exactly what the devil wants. Do not allow that to happen. When times get hard, when times get hard, you praise and you worship your God even harder. You want bondage broken? You want to be freed? You want to see the light at the end of that tunnel? Then you praise and you worship God when it does not make any sense. There is supernatural power when you worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you so much for this family, my family. Lord, I thank you for saving my soul, for setting me free. Thank you, Lord, for letting the chains drop off, that bondage to go away, knowing who my God is and that you're always there for me. And I will praise you, I will honor you, I will glorify you. And try in everything I do. And when I stumble and when I fall, Lord, just bear with me. I'm a work in progress. Lord, I pray for every individual here, the ones with us physically, the ones watching. Guide and direct them. Let them come to know the Holy Spirit even more. For relationship, Lord, that will blow our minds. Thank you that we can come and praise you. That we can worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. With every eye bowed, every eye bowed, every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to play a closing song. I'm sure some of you know it. You don't have to sing along. Just sit there and listen to it. Listen to the song as it plays. If you want prayer, come forward. I can pray with you. One of the deacons can pray for you. And say, Donnie, I don't need prayer, but I want to come so I can pray for somebody else. Altar is open for that too. You say, Donnie, I need, to, I need to come up so you can tell me about your friend Jesus. I can do that. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, listen to the words of this song.